Um, so let's just understand the question first. Um, what makes this a challenging question, it's a good curveball to throw, is that when you have a look at this thing, um, you don't know how big this is. So we're actually talking about it this morning. Um, one of the strategies for people who don't who aren't as good at dealing with binomials, it's just, just expand the damn thing, darn thing. You know, just, just write everything out and then hopefully we'll see something, but you can't do, this won't play ball with you, okay? Because it's like, when do you stop writing? Like, are there 10 terms, 11, like 1,000 terms? You can't do it, okay? So this requires, that actually makes this question quite hard to access, which is why they've given you the answer, right? Because you don't want to get all the way through and like, I have no idea whether I'm on the right track or not. I think the most helpful tool here, oh sorry, let me just come back. The reason why um, you're looking at the solution, you're like, where, where did the x go? The x just disappears. If you have a look, the reason why the x disappears is because what this question is interested in is the coefficients, which is just the numbers, okay? So therefore, once I've worked out which, the num which are the numbers I'm interested in, um, you can ignore the x's. You can ignore the x's. The question is really all about the n's and the k's, all right, and what their relationship is. So probably the best tool for this is going to be a tool that we actually used this morning for the two of you here, uh, which is to first work out what the general term of this is. What is the general term of this expansion? So what is this thing equal to? Well, it's the sum of a, um, a number of terms that all look very, very similar. Okay, um, let's have a look at this thing. So I'm going to start from the zeroth term. And being that this power up here is n, I'm going to count from 0 all the way up to n. When you include 0, of course, that means there are n plus 1 terms in total in whatever this expansion will be. OK, that's how many things I'm adding up. What are the three components that always occur in every single term? OK, so the first one is the binomial coefficient. OK, now in this case, uh, if this was the power of 3, then this would be 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, three, etc. This time the power is n, so that's why there's an n up here. And the r signifies which term am I looking at right now. There's the binomial coefficient. And then you've got some of these and some of these, right? Some of these and some of these. Now, I can write this. I'm just going to do it up the top in two different ways, OK? I can start with these being big, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Or I can start with this being big, and it gets smaller and smaller. Now, I'm going to write both, and then I'm going to ask you to tell me which one is an obvious choice to do in our actual working. So if I started with this one, it starts from 0. Then it's going to be 1 to the power of r, because the first term has r equals 0. It starts at 0, and it counts up. So how many of the other things are there? There will be, uh, be careful, it's n minus r, because these will always add up to n. Does that make sense? So here's one version that I could put in here. The other version, counting from the other direction, is to say, well, it's these guys that count down, and it's these guys that count up. Now you tell me which is easier to deal with. The right one. Clearly the right-hand one, right? Because look, you've got to put this messy n minus r power somewhere. You might as well attach it to 1, because then you don't really need to worry about it. Okay? So therefore, I'm going to write uh, that one. 1 n minus r x on k to the power of r. Okay? Therefore, the nth term along is going to be term n, uh, sorry, term r is a better way to say it, because that's the thing that's changing. Um, it's going to be ncr. I'm just going to write it out like so. And then I can simplify like that. Okay? Now, let's have a look at this. This thing here tells us what every single term along will be. And I want the x squared term and the x cubed term. Which ones are they going to be? Term what and term what? Term. term. Now have a look. If I try r equals 3, I'm going to have nc3, x on k to the power of 3. That'll be the x cubed term, because that's the only x happening. So you make that 3, you make this x cubed. I also want, so I'll write that down, term 3, nc3, x on k cubed. I also want the x squared term. So how am I going to do that? Two. Term 2. Squared. OK. Now at this point, I mean, you don't have to do this, but it does make it a, 
there's one tiny bit we don't have to write. I'm only interested in the coefficients. So therefore, I would say, if we define, if the terms are t3, t2, then I'm just going to call the coefficients c3 and c2. c3, which is just the coefficients that I'm interested in, um, and c3 will be part of it. And then you're going to have 1 over k cubed. You see, I'm not interested in the x's anymore. I'm just interested in the coefficient. And then you've got this guy, which is n2, 1 on k squared. OK, I'm almost there, right? The coefficient of x cubed, that's this one, is twice this coefficient. So therefore, I'm just going to be lazy, sorry. This coefficient is exactly double this coefficient. How's your brain doing? Okay. Now, what we've done is we've gone quite a fair way, right? We've tried to sort out how do we find these coefficients in here. So I use the general term to do that. And then in the general terms, I'm only interested in uh, specific ones and the coefficients within those specific ones. I'm almost there. See how what you've written over there is only n's and k's? Right? It's only n's and k's. So that's one of the reasons why they don't care about the x's. I'm just going to need to expand this thing and make Make n the subject, OK? How am I going to do that? OK, so I can take reciprocals of some things. Now, I will take reciprocals in a minute, but I don't really necessarily need to right away, because have a look at this, right? This nc3 business and this 1 on k cubed, nc2, this is 2 on k squared, there's another way to overcome the fractions in this. I don't have to take reciprocals, even though I can. I could just maybe multiply both sides by something convenient. What would be a convenient choice? How about, because I want to get rid of all the fractions. How about k cubed? Is that OK? Right. So cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. That's, that's progress, isn't it? That's good. Now. All I'm left with is this nc3 on this side, and then nc2 times 2k. Now, to make any more progress, do you notice I have ncr terms here, and I don't have any over here. So I'm going to have to unpack these things. So I need to know what these are equal to without the abbreviation. So do, do you remember? I'll give you a clue. It's a fraction. What's on the top? And factorial? R factorial, which in this case is 3 n minus r, which is in this case n minus 3. Okay? Um, that's going to translate over here. And then don't forget that 2k that's still hanging around. Okay? Now, this looks messy and intimidating, but really isn't as bad as it looks. Because look, cancel, cancel. Um, um, the 2 factorial in here is hiding inside this 3 factorial. If I cancel, if I divide both sides, what's left? It's just the 3. By the same logic, be careful here, you've got n minus 3 factorial and n minus 2 factorial. One of these is hiding in the other. Usually we'd say a small factorial is hiding inside a big one. Which one of these is bigger? This one is bigger, isn't it? That's, that's sneaky, right? Because number, this number is smaller, but it's actually a bigger thing. And you can imagine, because the next term down, in fact, I'm even going to write this. Uh, what have I got over here? This is 1 on 3 n minus 3 factorial. Right? If you ever get confused about this, like I was getting confused about it 30 seconds ago, do that unrolling thing we talk about. Do you remember that? So this guy here is n minus 2 times the next one smaller, which is n minus 3, n minus 4. I don't need to write all those. It's just that. Okay? Um, cancel, cancel. The next line is almost there, isn't it? Two fractions, cross multiply. Uh, what do you end up with on the left? You're just going to have n minus 2. 6k, and then your next line is that one. OK? <laughs> Let me make sure we understand, because the most important thing about this is not the number crunching, is it? Right? In fact, probably once I wrote down, may, maybe when I got to here, you're like, oh, I see. The rest of this can just collapse. Okay. The first thing you need to do is, in order to work with this thing, to get coefficients out of it, you have to be able to know what, what are each of the terms. So that's why I appeal to the general term. Then you've got to know, well, which of the general terms are going to be relevant to me. And then you use the information in the question itself to relate those two together. And then, 
and then you just have to know some definitions of terms, okay?